So preparing your application, now that you've got an idea of what, how to put together a successful project, let's get into the actual application. The application must be submitted through our online system. You can access it at this link here. You'll wanna bookmark the logon page when you get there. Or you can find information about logging in to our online system, creating an account or any other troubleshooting here on the left-hand side of our page in the navigation bar, click access the online grant system and you can click here to log in. You can also hear some other information about how to start a new account or troubleshoot a few things. But in this case, I've already logged in, so I'm gonna show you what this application looks like. When you first log in, you'll come to your applicant dashboard, and this shows you all the information about anything that you've applied for previously here at the bottom. You can update your information if you want. But what you wanna do is come up to the top and click apply to find grants that are open and accepting applications. So great, the first thing you come through is arts in the parks and historic sites. Remember, there are two ways to apply, either as an organization or an individual artist, and so make sure that you're selecting the right uh, program. To actually start an application, you click this blue apply button at the top right of that program. If you're not ready to apply yet, but you just wanna check out the application, you can click this preview. Send to Grant Hub is just another tool. Grant Hub is a, another program that kind of keeps track of grants across multiple organizations for you. And so if you're using Grant Hub, that's great. Feel free to do that. I've never used it, so I can't really help you with that. In this case, I'm just going to preview this application just to give you an idea of what you're gonna look at. Okay, so I've got some advice to you here at the first uh, start of this application. This is where you can find marketing guidelines. The resources listed here are very helpful. I've kind of dropped them into different places throughout the application um, so that you can use them for relevant pieces of it, but definitely recommend uh, flipping through all of those. Here is where that video on um, your first conversation with the site staff can be found. Okay, so just gonna move through a few things here. Um, this is a pretty dynamic application. I'm not gonna go through each question because I think you'll get the hang of it pretty quickly. But remember to select the right application when you're opening this up. This one in this case is for an individual, but you can apply as an organization. You just gotta find that other application. So everything here, um, just type directly into the form. Remember, in this case, I'm only previewing this application and so nothing will save, but if I had actually hit apply, then everything is going to save automatically for me. As long as you're connected to the internet, every time you type or every time you, uh, every time you type 100 characters, or every time you click, it will save automatically. All right, remember you can select as many sites as is feasible for you to do this program. There's no extra points for doing more, just do what's feasible. As you come along here, the thing that I wanna focus in on is that each section is uh, highlighting specific criteria. There are four main criteria, which I'm gonna just hit on in a moment, but they're listed right here within the application. So make sure that you are ans you're really highlighting these criteria, the scoring criteria we're looking for as you're answering each of these questions. Um, remember that this program is pretty important to highlight what's unique about the site. You may have to have a conversation with the site staff if you're not feeling like you're answering that question really well. You may just wanna go explore the site a little bit more, may need to do a little bit more research into how your work, your creative work, connects with what's unique about the site and how people can connect with it. Also important to articulate what the site wants to get out of it. So this is a good, good thing to, conversation to have with the site staff right at the beginning, their goals. You do not have to uh, use every character, allowable character in each of these questions. In fact, being concise and brief is, goes a long way as long as you're answering the question completely. There are places where you'll need to upload a file. So pretty simple here, but if you're having any trouble with that, don't ever hesitate to call me and um, I can take care of it for you. I cannot, however, help you with any of your own computer um, technical problems or um, specific things about your operating system, but I can help you with 
getting things into the online system. So again, just a few um, different things we're looking for in the criteria, this, in this case, public benefit and participation. This is where you're talking about who is your primary audience and how are they gonna participate? How is this an active experience for them? Remember, you're designing this with them in mind first, based on your strengths as an artist or as a, an arts organization. We also ask you to, to take a good look at how am I gonna know if this was um, successful for the participants, for the site, and for myself. This is where you'll wanna tell us about all of the logistics of the program, including show us that you have um, you know, a timeline that makes sense. Show us that you have uh, either staff who's gonna help you, maybe your own staff where you're hiring assistants or you've got um, folks who are partners of yours who are gonna make sure that this goes off without a hitch, or maybe you've got all the expertise you need. And of course, your marketing plan, which I talked about earlier. In this case, we're not asking for the full document upload here, we're just asking for a general overview of what's your plan for marketing to this primary audience that you've identified. I'm gonna take a moment and describe the budget because it trips folks up. The, the biggest thing to remember is that your expenses and your income should be the same because we wanna see that you have the, the amount of, of resources going into the project to cover all of the resources that are going to be spent on the project. So in this box first, we want you to list the um, key the line items that you're investing into this project. So here's what I'm looking for. Looking for your grant request. So you should have at least the amount that you are requesting listed here. In this case, it might be $3,000, might be less. Oops. If you're going to charge any fees for this program, that's fine. Yeah, that can be um, included as part of the income for the program, that is all of the resources going into the program. And maybe you've decided that it's worth it to you to kick in some other um, cash yourself. That could be included in this projected income. You're gonna total up all of these line items in this, and that is your total project income. So again, the resources that are going toward your project, just cash resources in, in so far. Then you're going to uh, list everything that you're gonna spend all of that income on including the grant requests, including anything above and beyond it. So it lists everything that you need to, um, that, you, that you need to expense to make this project happen. That's uh, materials, it might be rental fees, it might be uh, artistic fees, it might be transportation to go scouting the site. Um, it might be, yeah, it might be paying yourself. You are, are, you are a professional and so you might Pay yourself in this. In that case, you just want to make sure that you kind of justify a little bit of what you're paying yourself. So maybe a standard fee for your kind of artistic services is $75 a work an hour or, or whatever this for a workshop. Um, just give us an idea of that and it should make sense so the reviewer is reading that. It should um, seem feasible to them. So you may just have to give a little bit of an explanation. These expenses should add up to be exactly the same amount as your uh, total project income. So if I have $3,500 worth of expenses, then I need to show that I have $3,500 worth of income. No more, no less. You, I don't care if you earn income on this yourself, like personal income. In this case, we're looking at resources going into the project and resources that are being spent to make the project happen. There might be things that other folks are contributing to the project um, other resources, that's in-kind. So in-kind is any non-cash resources contributed to the project by anyone other than you. So that could be um, volunteer hours, it could be materials that you have, that you're borrowing, or somebody's donating, somebody other than you is donating. We wanna know that kind of stuff here. So list all of those main categories here and add them up to show the in-kind support. This is its own number. So you do not include that in the expenses or in the income. So if I could have $3,500 worth of expenses, $3,500 worth of income, and maybe $500 worth of in-kind. That would be how we wanted to see that budget. So if I've just confused you further, then go ahead and give me a call when you're working out 
your budget and uh, we'll make sure that it is being clearly proposed in your application. We're also looking for, if you are an individual artist, we want you to show us your stuff. So um, not only do we want you to describe how your artistic experience relates to this project, you should be putting your best foot forward in this. We hope this is something that you really enjoy and are inspired to do. Um, when you're, especially when you are coming up with the right fit for this program, when you're thinking about what, what, what's the goal of the site? What does the site want to get out of it? Think about also like, what am I really good at? What is, what do I bring to the table in this? Really at the heart of everything we do at the Indiana Arts Commission is that we believe that you have something really valuable to bring to any conversation. Arts conversations are not arts conversations. This is an, ex an a great experience to test out some of those ideas um, and be authentic to yourself. Really like lean into your strengths in this. We want to see an artist resume. If you have never put together an artist resume before, this is a great time to do it. If you don't know how, I will be happy to send you to some great resources um, or to give you some advice of what to include. You might want to think about including, for the purposes of this grant, anything non-arts related that is actually related to this grant itself. So maybe you are also a landscaper and this is really important because your project is incorporating some different native Indiana um, seascapes. You might consider including that in your resume. We want to see some artistic documentation. This is required this year. Um, so we want to see some of your work. You can submit either, well you can submit one of the three ways that I've listed here. You can submit up to 10 images. You can submit a link to a video or media file that will send somebody to like YouTube or Vimeo or Dropbox. Or you can submit up to 10 pages of a writing sample. But remember, if you are uploading a file, you can only upload one single file per question. So if you are uploading 10 images, they need to be consolidated into one file. That could be a single PDF file with 10 different pages of high quality images, one image each page. Um, if you need advice on how to present that, that uh, documentation, I'll be happy to talk it through with you. Okay, um, we also ask, this is an optional question, but we ask you to give us an idea, give the panelists a sense of like, what's gonna happen during this? Give them a visual or give them an example uh, an audio or a video example of what the participants will do or what you will do, but especially what the participants will do. Um, we wanna see some high quality opportunities here, at least to learn and engage with the medium. If you've done this project before, this is a great place to upload images of what's happened in the past. and really helps the panelists understand what you're proposing to do. We also just want you to really, um, that really lay it out for us. How is this project gonna help the audience increase their understanding and appreciation for what they're uh, doing with you for that art medium. And then just a few additional uh, questions about, uh, about you, some of your personal information that is, uh, we've marked some of these that are um, confidential. If you would like to be uh, considered applying in the artist access category, please feel free. Um, the access category are, is an opt-in, optional category for artists who identify as somebody with a disability in any arts discipline. Um, so those applicants will be paneled with other applications that also identify in that way, and, but everyone competes for the same funding source. That stuff is confidential on what, we ask you to give us an idea of the nature of a disability and that's confidential, but um, again, you will be marked as opting into the access category when we have any um, public information. Okay. So again, I'll just show you one more time how we got to here. You logged in, you are on your applicant dashboard. For me, I clicked apply up here, and then you're gonna select the actual blue button. I'm not gonna do that because I don't wanna start an application for myself. But then once you, you know, that'll take you into the actual application and everything saves automatically. And when you wanna go back in, maybe you get tired, of working on this or you need to make a phone call and clarify a few things, you can come back to this anytime. You do not need to click that blue apply button again. That will start a fresh application. Instead, come back to the applicant dashboard. I clicked that house icon and it will be listed here underneath active requests and you can click edit on any application that you've started that is still uh, accepting submissions 
and, and get going again. Okay, excellent. Um, a couple of other tips. I don't recommend that you that you write in Microsoft Word and then paste into these uh, responses because it will bring in some formatting issues. And so if you're gonna do that, you can right click and select um, paste as plain text. And that will, I'll just show you here really quick. That will make sure that there's no um, formatting that's being brought in as well. So for example, if I right click and instead of selecting paste, I can select paste as plain text and that'll paste in without any issues. Okay, great. I think that's all I wanna show you in the application itself, but I'm gonna to run to chat over here and answer any questions. Will we be able to print the forms to work on them and enter them later? Yeah, great question. Actually, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, you will still have to enter everything into this online form. If you don't have um, the technology or the ability to do that, just contact me and we can come up with a solution for you. Um, however, I do want you, this is how we, this is how we accept applications. So only on like special conditions will make um, other accommodations. Um, but you can, gosh, I wish I had a better example of this. Um, when you actually start an application, there will be a button up here that is like a application packet, or you can click this question list. And by clicking either of those, it will populate as a PDF. In this case, the question list is just an, a, a blank application. So you can see it's a different format than what you would see in that live um, form. If you had already started your application and you downloaded an application packet, like if you wanted to save the version of it that you were doing, you can click that and it would download it populated with your responses. So you can download or print from there. It might look slightly different depending on your operating system on your computer. Okay, we have several activities. Um, do we have to talk to each park before we apply or after we apply? Before. If you are proposing several different sites, you need to have a conversation with each of them. They don't always talk to each other, although they have some similarities likely. Um, I recommend that if you want some advice on creating an artist's resume that you call me directly. And that my contact information is at the end of this webinar and available online in lots of places. So you should be able to get in touch with me pretty easily. Okay, let's keep moving along. There's just a little bit more information to get through. All right, make sure you allow yourself plenty of time to get this done. I guarantee you that if you try to submit this form right at 429 Eastern time on the deadline, you're gonna have a technical problem. And when that happens, just call me immediately. I can help you get some things sorted out, but you have to keep me updated. Um, we don't recommend copy and paste. I already talked about that. Um, and it's always good to have another set of eyes on things for typos or for clarity. Be concise and clear and answer to that question directly. You don't need to use all of the character count listed in that application. Yeah. Okay, so before you submit, make sure you make all your revisions. Um, we do not make revisions after you submit, except in extreme circumstances. Um, and as long as the application is submitted before the deadline and you need to make that revision before the deadline, but only in extreme circumstances. Okay, as soon as you hit submit, you will receive a confirmation email from the online system. If you did not receive a confirmation email, check your junk and then call us to confirm if it has been submitted or not. It likely, weren't, it likely was not submitted. 